This video asks, what is the value of life? If Dr. Evil gave you $1 million, would you let him shoot you? No. If Dr. Evil gave you $100 billion, would you let him shoot you? No. Your personal value of life is approaching infinity. Everybody's personal value of life is approaching infinity. If Dr. Evil gave you $1 million, would you let him shoot someone else? No. If Dr. Evil gave you $100 billion, would you let him shoot someone else? Maybe. High ethics there. So the value of life is a very strange way of thinking about things. On the one hand, if you don't come up with the value of life, if you're implicitly valuing it at zero, you won't consider it in benefit cost analysis. In contrast, if you're valuing it at infinity, in which case you'll only consider the value of life and not consider other things like value of time, the only improvements worthwhile are safety improvements. If Dr. Evil gave you a million dollars, would you let him with a 1% probability lower the probability that someone else will live to 74 instead of 75? That's much harder. What if that other person will live an hour shorter? Dr. Evil will give you a million dollars to shorten someone's life by an hour near the end of their life. Maybe you'll take him up on that. Now, we're thinking about it in terms of marginal value of life. And you can say, well, if I go a little bit faster, increasing the probability that I'll get into a crash and die, but I'll save some time, you're comparing the probability of being in a crash and dying versus the amount of time that you save. There are many studies that are done which examine workers holding higher risk jobs. If you work at a chemical factory, there's a higher probability that you won't live to see 60 because there's a chance that the chemical factory will blow up or that you will get cancer which is a somewhat higher risk job than being a civil engineer in an office, or a higher risk job than being a professor, or a higher risk job than being a clerk. So, people who work in chemical factories get a premium for a known risk. And that premium is the additional amount that they need to take in order to work at a job which has a higher risk of living a shorter life. Do you buckle your seatbelt? Some people don't buckle their seatbelt. How much time does that save them? A couple of seconds you can work out how much time they saved versus what's the increased likelihood of them dying in a car crash. You buy an old car with fewer safety features than a new car. There are many different characteristics about different cars, but one of them is the safety features. How much more are you willing to pay for a safer car? How much less likely are you to die in a safer car? There are usually ways of figuring out value of life. These tend to come out in the $6 million ballpark. Using that kind of information, we can figure out what people's operational value of life is at the margins. Not with certainty, not necessarily themselves, but as a statistical phenomenon over a lot of people. So we could call it a value of statistical life. In 2003, U.S. Department of Transportation guidance suggests a value of $9.1 million be used, which takes values that were estimated earlier in time and inflates it to 2013 levels. Different federal agencies have different value of life. If you looked at the Environmental Protection Agency's implicit value of life, depending on how much money it costs to prevent various type of pollutants, it varies widely depending on the type of pollutant because they're not being systematic about saying the value of life is a particular amount of money. USDOT, Department of Transportation, is trying to be more systematic now. That's the implication of the analysis. How much is the value of life worth? How much are you or a society willing to spend or to save some random person's life? That's why we call it a value of statistical life because we're not looking at the value of your life, but of a random person who we cannot identify in advance.